One of the things that I think is so influential in the Christian life, so impactful, so important, and yet it's not talked about at all, really, not a lot, is prayer. And now more people are talking about prayer, but it is not the controversial, it's not the cool thing to talk about. It doesn't get the clicks. It's not about LGBT issues or the culture war or something like that. It's like prayer. Prayer is boring. Prayer is you sit by yourself in a room. You're like a monk. You got to detach from the world. You got to pray to God. You know, a lot of times I'm not hearing hearing anything from God most times. And so it's like, what is prayer about? And yet the scripture is so clear that pray without ceasing right? Like Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. pray. Prayer seems like such an integral part of the Christian life. And yet I have trouble with prayer. Like even as somebody that has a YouTube channel dedicated to Jesus, has multiple YouTube channels dedicated to talking about Jesus, me personally in my own life, I've not figured out prayer. So take this as an exploration into my own discovery of what prayer can of how I can engage with prayer for myself. Okay, so here are just some of my my things, my background with prayer. As a kid, I was a little bit insufferable because I had all these theological terms memorized. I was big into theology podcasts. I really enjoyed closing in prayer. So if somebody was like, hey, anybody want to close in prayer? I'd be like, I'm in it. I'm on it, you know? Um, if somebody's like, we need to pray for the meal. I'm like, Isaac can do it, you know, in my, as a kid and also as a teenager, I wanted to do that because to me, I, I want, there was an aspect of like, yeah, I'm, I just want to do this because I want to pray and thank God and all that kind of thing. But in the background too, there was an element that, man, I want to show people how spiritual I am. It was almost a performance art in a way. And prayer can honestly often be a performance art. And Jesus was aware of that. Like for me, um, I would, (laughs) I would do it, try to get female attention, try to get, uh, you know, other older people in my life to be like, wow, Isaac is such a mature, responsible, uh, godly and, and spiritually mature young man that he can do this. That's what I wanted. I wanted that praise. I wanted that approval. When I think about prayer now, Um, it's a lot easier for me to like do something like read the Bible or even evangelize. Like when we talk about the spiritual disciplines, things that we're called to do as Christians, it's a lot easier to go and do those things because I feel like I'm doing something. I'm accomplishing something. Part of why prayer is so hard is that if we pull away the performance aspect of it and bring it back to its simplest form and its true form and its godly form, then you don't feel like you're accomplishing anything. In fact, it's the exact opposite. You're asking God to intercede for you on your, on your behalf so that because you can't accomplish all you need to do because you don't have everything you need. This is a really humbling thing because you want to be in control. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's just some things I keep in mind when I think about prayer and part of the reason that it's been so hard for me. Maybe you will relate to this, Okay. God already knows what you need. Okay, Jesus makes that clear. He says, hey, don't use these many words. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, I believe. He said, don't don't use many words and and lofty words like the Gentiles do, but because your, your heavenly father already knows what you need. Okay, so me from a skeptic's point of view, uh, I'm saying, okay, well, if God only knows what I need as a Christian, why do I need to spend so much attention or time on to this thing? God, like, you know what I need? Like, okay, like, why am I doing this? Are you just forcing me to do this? Okay, next thing. I'm not going to learn anything. It just feels like sometimes I'm not going to learn anything from prayer. I like reading books. I like studying the Bible. I like getting new information into my mind that I can formulate new ideas and maybe become more wise. So God, you don't feel like you're talking to me that often. It just doesn't. And so if I'm not going to learn anything, then it feels like a waste of time. Um, I have a lot to do just in my life. That's what it feels like. I have a lot to do. God, I, I really don't have time for this. Uh, maybe, like, I'm not going to learn anything. You already know what I need. So like, wouldn't we just be better? It wouldn't we be a better partnership if you just kind of, you took that information, you, you did do what you need to do and I'll do what I need to do and we'll be great. Okay. It doesn't feel like it changes a lot. It does. Like if you're a skeptic, you know, it, it sometimes prayer, it just feels like, more skeptical about it. It's like, okay, uh, I prayed about this 
and maybe something happened, but maybe something didn't. And other time, maybe you didn't pray about this that much, but something good happened anyway. And you're like, ah, oh, this is awesome. Maybe prayer doesn't change a whole lot. And I know different people have different experiences with this. They, they've they experienced particular times in their life where they, they it is without a doubt that God, God answered their prayer. But then other times it feels like, man, God really didn't answer my prayer when I needed him to in the way that I wanted him to. So these are kind of the skeptics, like, at least when I think about prayer, like, these are the things that I think about. Okay. So if you relate to this, this is where we go from here. Here's what I discovered, truly, and I'm still working through this. Our prayer is an extension of a relationship with God, okay? It's not just like a duty that we have to perform. It is a delight that we get to participate in. And you're like, Isaac, it doesn't feel like a delight. It doesn't feel like a delight. Okay, Uh, it doesn't feel like a delight because we've yet to experience what it's actually like to be in communion with God. Okay, just stop for a second. It's because we haven't experienced, we don't, we haven't experienced what it's like to be in communion with him. It's like having this uh, pen pal and you write back and forth and they write you notes of encouragement and you're like, man, I really like this person. But one time this person's like, hey, actually we could, uh, we could meet up in person one time. And you're like, you know what, you know, we, we, we correspond through, through our letters that we send to each other. It's just, I, I just don't really... I don't really need, you know, the in-person thing. I got other people that can be, you know, in my life and people that are close and just take, it takes less effort to hang out with them. And so, you know, you stay in your part of the, you know, country or world and we can keep writing back and forth, but I just don't need it, you know? That's kind of how we operate with God in some ways because we, we say we don't need it because you haven't seen what it's like to be in the presence of this friend, like truly, or given time to experience what they're like. Now, we know a lot about them, Great. That's awesome. Um, but if you've never s- been in the presence of this pen pal, you haven't understood what a delight it is to be in their presence. Okay. That's, that's an important part. So what I found, and you might relate to this, my dynamic with God was much more of a coworker um, versus a son and a father. Let me explain that. And as I explain it, you're going to begin to like feel things in your life that are going to click to this. Okay. So let's, let's go through what a coworker is like. A coworker is working towards a mission. Okay. We're working towards a mission. That's true. We optimize for efficiency. That's true. We check up on project reports together. I might ask him, I might ask him for a raise every once in a while. Talk to him about HR issues, small talk. Okay. How does this correlate with God? Okay. Well, I'm working towards my mission of building God's kingdom. Absolutely. We optimize for efficiency. I'm saying, God, I got a lot to do. You already know what I need. So I'm just going to leave that in your court and and I'm going to do what I need to do. But like, we don't need to cross paths on this. You can deal with this on your end. But then every once in a while, I circle around for HR issues. God, this person is really annoying me. Can you deal with this person? Can you fire this person? And some small talk. Oh, God. Um, You know, thank you for uh, today. Thank you for this meal. Um, Amen. Just some small talk. Versus God being, relating to God as a father and a son. Um, A father enjoys spending time with him. We enjoy spending time with him. There's no agenda. We speak deeply and real. Now, that, now, maybe you don't have that relationship with your father, but ideally, I hope you can think that that would be an ideal relationship with a father, to have no expectations, to just want to be in their presence. It's not about what you're going to do together necessarily. Maybe you'll fix up the old truck. Maybe you'll, you know, you'll do some yard work together. Maybe you'll, you'll, you know, go golfing. I don't know what you guys like to do with your dads, but um, maybe play tennis. I like to play tennis with my dad, but it's not about, oh, okay. Every time we get together, we're going to accomplish this thing or we're going to do this thing. And we're just coworkers. What I found, what I found is I want to hoard my time. I want to hoard my time, just like a little gremlin with all of his stuff. I'm going to just put it in the corner and I'll say, nobody gets in here. Nobody gets to touch my stuff. This is my stuff. I don't get any. Nobody gets to touch it. We're just like little gremlins with our time, with our energy, with our money. Um, And when it comes to prayer, we think there's a lot more important things that we can get up to. So we hoard it from God because we think it's ours. God, I'm going to give you this section of my time because I'm really generous and, (laughs) and I'm doing this for you, God. Meanwhile, all of our time is God's. All of our time is God's. So God isn't, uh, oh, thank you so much, Isaac, for sacrificing your time to be with me, the king of the universe. No, he, he, it's his time. It belongs to him. 
because we are his children, because he has saved us, because that's our why we're created, okay? So we hoard our time. Now, talking about the, the father, right? Talking about relating to God as a father, maybe you've never felt safe with your father. Maybe you've never felt like he's somebody that you want to sit down with. Maybe he's actually not a good guy. He's done a lot of evil. He's hurt you in a lot of ways. You still carry those scars and those wounds from him, the things that he said, the things that he did. And so now under, trying to figure out how you can relate to God as a father, as somebody that you want to sit down with, spend time with, that's that's tough. That's really hard for you. I, I want to point you to some stories. In the, I want to point you to some stories that you can read on your own. I want to point you to some stories that you can read on your own. And you're probably familiar with these, but I want to remind you of them. Um, there's a story of the 99 sheep, the one sheep that leaves the fold and the shepherd goes to find that sheep because he loves it so much. He gives attention and care to that sheep that has gone. He's not scolding that sheep. He doesn't hate that sheep. No, he brings it back into the fold. I want you to think about the prodigal son, how beautiful that story is in that son was squandering all that he has. And as he comes back to submit himself as a servant, the father doesn't go, oh, yep, you're back. Yeah, I knew you'd screw up. I knew you'd waste everything that I have. I told you so. I guess you can stay here. You are my son after all, but I'm just so ashamed of you. That's not how he responded. He said, you know, let's throw a party. Let's throw a feast for him for my son has returned. That's God's orientation towards you. So even in prayer, if you feel like I'm distant from God, I'm struggling, I, I'm screwing up. God surely doesn't love me and he, and he probably hates me and he probably thinks I'm a screw up. That's not God's orientation towards you. Yes, there probably is a place for repentance to say, God, I'm sorry, I've screwed up. I need your forgiveness. But God's going to welcome you back into the fold because he loves you and he cares for you because you're his child. Like nothing can separate you from the love of God, not even your own stupidity and your own mistakes. <laughs> it just can't happen. Okay, I'm going to close with this. My belief is that you are changed by the people that you spend time with. And us in our social media age, and I'm thinking about this specifically for myself, is that I spend one minute a day with 100 different people on social media, one minute a day with 100 different people. And none of those people are able to get to know me and I'm not really able to get to know those people. It's just all surface level, surface level, surface level, and I remain unchanged. We like this because it feels safe. We like this because it feels uninvasive into our life. Jesus is a caring father. He is a loving father. He is the perfect place for us to begin to be vulnerable, and vulnerability means to spend some time with him. In a lot of ways, we would rather... Um, we would rather for people to just see us as good and acceptable and have a good opinion of us than for them to actually get to know us. And similar with God, um, we'd rather for him to think of us as good and as a nice person than for him to actually get to know us because we're scared of what he's going to see. Because if he sees who I truly am, oh, God's going to reject me. God's going to reject me. Friend, that's what the grace of God is for. So today... Open yourself up to God. Begin in prayer. It's a relationship. It's the most healing relationship that you'll ever encounter. It's real. Yes, he knows what you're going through already, but he wants you to be raw and vulnerable with him because it changes you. It changes you. It allows you to be in this place of vulnerability, of learning to surrender yourself, of learning to rely on him for everything that you need, to cut out the distractions of the world and to say, God, this day is for you. And I'm going to, I'm going to dedicate this time to you. It's hard. I've not mastered this. I'm at the beginning of it, but I'd like to hear you guys in the comments, what your journey is like with prayer. And if you'd like more videos on this topic, thank you to everyone on Patreon that supports what I'm doing. Seriously. I couldn't do it without you guys. I'm doing a lot of videos that aren't necessarily the most clickbait type of stuff, but I think they are so important. And so I'm thankful for each one of you who support me on there. And if you'd like to get behind my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, click the link in my description and sign up to Patreon today. It is the way that this ministry keeps going and growing and my family is supported and we have literally food on the table. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And until next time, God bless.